Welcome to another edition of ProSoft Technology Video Training. In this edition, we'll be setting up an Annex 2 Allen Bradley Remote I.O. Scan Communication Module. The Annex 2 AB Rio Scan connects a ControlLogix PLC or other device to an Allen Bradley Remote I.O. Network. This allows users to replace their existing remote I.O. control systems with a Control Logix or Compact Logix PAC without having to remove the existing racks of I.O. To begin, we'll use the Annex 2's onboard web page to assign an IP address. I'll also quickly go through the steps to use the module's link local address. Then we'll connect to the remote I.O. network and use the AB Rio scan utility to auto-configure the module to the network settings. And we'll scan the I.O. and then create aliases for RS Logix 5000. The Annex 2 will emulate a Control Logix 17 slot rack with an ENBT module placed in slot 16. The Annex 2 is shipped with a link local IP address of 169.254.42.84 and this can be accessed regardless of what subnet your computer is using. So I'll plug the Annex 2 into a switch that my PC is plugged into as well and I'll open a browser and enter the module's link local IP address. If the page does not come up for you, it could be that your computer is not set to route that address. And there are a few quick steps that can fix that. First, we'll open up command prompt. If you're using Windows 7, you need to open the command prompt as an administrator. The first thing to do is find out what your computer's current IP address is. So just type in ipconfig and what we need is the IPv4 address. This is the IP address that my computer is using here. So when you find out your IP address, write it down. And now I'll enter a command that will tell the computer to route the Annex module's link local address. So this is route add 169.254.0.0 space mask another space 255.255.0.0 space then you would enter your IP address and then space then metric space 20 and hit enter and if everything was entered correctly you should now be able to access the Annex 2's web page. And once the Annex 2 configuration tool opens I'll expand administration on the sidebar and select Annex configuration. Here the Annex 2 can be configured to use a static IP address or to obtain its IP from a DHCP server. In most cases, you will configure an annex with a static IP address. Otherwise, the DHCP might assign a different IP address each time the annex powers up. So I'll select static. And next, I'll assign a host name. It's important to use a meaningful host name here because it's going to figure very prominently when we set up the aliases a little later. Now I'll enter the static IP address that I want the module to use. This is an address on the same subnet as my local network. I'll enter the netmask and gateway address. And finally, I'll change the firmware type to ANX AB scan. And when all this is entered, click submit to complete the configuration. Click continue to reboot the annex with the new configuration. Wait at least 60 seconds before clicking continue again. Now that the IP has been assigned, the link local address no longer works. If I enter the new IP in the address bar, it will take me back to the Annex 2's web page. And there you have it. 
The next step is to connect the Annex to AB Rio scanner to the remote I.O. network and use the AB Rio scan utility to auto configure the module to network settings. So I'll connect the Annex module to the remote I.O. network using the 3 pin Phoenix connector. Now I'll open up the AB Rio scan utility which is included with the module. This is used to set the baud rate, the rack, block transfer modules, and mapping I.O. data to control logic scheduled connections. To connect my Annex module, I'll go to Communication and select Annex IP address. Then I'll enter the module's IP address and click OK. And there you can see the host name that I set for the module so I know that I have the right module. And the Annex AB Rio supports auto configuration, which automatically detects the network baud rate and configures the racks on an attached remote IO network. Be sure that the controller with the connection to the Annex AB Rio is in program mode when you perform the auto configuration. So to auto configure, I'll select configure and then auto configure and the annex first detects the network baud rate and then sends messages to all possible racks and builds a network configuration from the replies that it receives and displays the network configuration here. If you have block transfer modules that you want to add you would do that now. They have to be added manually so I'll go down to rack 3 group 1 slot 0 output right click and select module properties and then under module type I'll add a 1771 IFE I'll pick manual which will give control of the lock transfer configuration and execution to the control logics processor I'll click OK and there's my block transfer module now its IO data is unassigned at the moment so I'll go up to map and select auto map any unassigned and this will automatically map any unassigned IO to scheduled inputs and outputs in the control logics processor. So I will move on to creating aliases for RS logics. The configuration tool exports aliases for data that can then be imported into RS logics 5000. So I'll go to tools and select export alias file the alias prefix is used to distinguish between aliases for different Annex AB Rio modules. So if you have more than one Annex AB Rio in the RS Logics configuration, then you would assign each one a different alias prefix so that the aliases for each module are unique. The base tag is the same as the host name that I assign to the Annex module. It's used to identify the Annex module that the aliases are being created for, and it should match the name that you give the emulated ENBT module in the Control Logics chassis. We'll get to that in a little bit. It's recommended that you write control programs in terms of these aliases rather than using absolute addresses. That way, if the mapping of the I.O. data changes, you can just re-import the new aliases and the control program will point to the new data locations. I'll go up to Configure and re-download the configuration with the block transfer module to the Annex 2. And I'll go ahead and save the configuration file. And that should do it. The Annex 2 is ready to go. Now I'll move on to RS Logix 5000 where I'll be adding an Annex AB RIO which emulates a 17 slot 1756 chassis. I'll create a new project with a 1756 Control Logix controller. I'll set the revision number and give it a name. and click OK. Now I'll add an EN2T module to my project. And just to be clear, this is the actual bridge module that I have plugged into my four slot control logics rack. I'll filter it by communication 
and select the EN2T. I'll give it a name. Now I'll enter the IP address, the slot number is correct, and I'll click OK. So now I'll right click on the EN2T module and select new module. And again, under communication, I'm going to select a 1756 ENBT and click create. This is going to be the bridge module in the emulated rack. I'll name the new module training underscore ANX2, which is the same as the base tag name from my alias settings. It's important that you use the same name for both to ensure that the aliases work properly. I'm going to open up the module definition window and disable electronic keying for communication with the emulated NBNT module. It's essential for you to disable the keying and also to set the rack connection to none. Next, I'll enter the IP address of the Annex module. And finally, I'll place the bridge module in slot 16. And I'll click OK. I'll expand the 1756 ENBT that I just added and under its backplane add another new module and this will be just a generic 1756 module. I'll give it a name again based on the base tag name but with the slot number added in and this is just to make it easier to identify. So this will be in slot 0 and it's going to be for data. The data type will be int slot 0. The transfer parameters will be 1 to 50, 2 to 48, 4 and 0. And I'll click OK. Uh, 5 milliseconds is good. And the Annex 2 is compatible with both unicast and multicast. I'll be using unicast, so I'll just leave this checked and click OK. So now I'll add a second generic 1756 module. I'll give it the same name, but this will be in slot 15. The slot 15 is specifically set aside for diagnostic data, and that's what this is for. So again, the COM format is integer, uh, slot is 15. Since this is for diagnostic data, the output size here can be set to 1 because there's actually only one word map there to reset the diog counters. For module properties, I'm going to set the RPI up to 500 milliseconds. Uh, since this is just for diagnostics, it's not critical to get updates that frequently. So with all that done, I can now bring in the CSV file that I exported from the AB RIO scan utility. First click on controller tags, then I'll go down to the edit tags tab, and this is where the aliases will appear. So go up to tools in the top menu bar, we'll go to import, tags and logic comments. Now I'll navigate to the location where I saved the CSV file, select it and click import. And here we can see the new tags, uh, the alias names matching the base tags. And I'll verify that everything's working so far. And no errors, so that's good. I'll go back to monitor tags and now I can go online. So go up to communications and select who active. And I'll just drill down to my control logics processor and click download. And download again on the download window. Wait for the controller to receive the configuration. 
and place the controller in run mode. So if I look under description for the Rio underscore input and output tags, Rio underscore being the alias prefix that I assigned in the Rio scan utility, I can see the breakdown of what IO data they correspond to. For instance, rack three, group zero, slot zero, discrete input, rack three, group zero, slot zero, discrete output, and so on. And if I expand the group zero input here, I can see the bits of the slot one input word. And that is how you configure an Annex 2 AB Rio Scan module. If you have any questions, visit our website or give us a call. Happy training.